Welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Larry and Spencer, and we're going to be discussing City on a Hill, Season 2, Episode Number 6, Don't Go Saying Last Words. Uh, this episode ends where we finally have Grace Campbell learning the truth. So what sh- whatever she does going forward it is who she is, you know, because I've been giving her the benefit of the doubt, and I still do to a degree, and like I said, until we'll see what happens next week. But up until this point, you know, everyone around her was telling her that Anton and, you know, Kelvin were doing bad things, but she didn't want to believe it. You know, they, they just it, literally murdered everyone in their rival crew. Um, Kelvin took a bullet in the process. She's trying to get him to the hospital, and she basically point blank asks him, is everything true? And he's like, yes, Anton, we killed, you know, we were involved in the death of the young girl. Yes, he shot uh, DeCourcy's wife, Shaban. That shit happened. And... She's been lying for Anton, but will she continue? I don't know. Where do you guys think the Grace Campbell story goes? There's only, what, two episodes left? Two or three? Um, so I'm assuming you know it'll resolve here soon. But where does the Grace Campbell story go? I think it's three because I think they do. I think theirs is a nine episode this season. Might be eight. I'll check. Go ahead. Well, I, I, think, I think the trailer actually said that there were two left. Like the trailer for the next episode. Uh, now that you say it, I think it did say that. You know, so we only have two left. So, I mean, it's hitting the fan over these next two episodes. You know, things are going to come to a head. It's like, but, you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I really don't know my opinion of, of Grace here. Because she kind of, she kind of crossed the line when she stole money from the community there. You know, it's like, yeah, it seems like she's a, a good mother. And, yeah, I, I can imagine that it seemed like. Um, you know, like she felt her son was innocent because up until this point in the show, she's kind of saw her oldest son as like a model citizen. You know, like she was like, remember when they went to go pick up, you know, her youngest son and she was with the priest and everything. And, you know, it, and they were telling him, hey, it's like, hey, you got you got Anton looking out for you and everything. I may be saying the wrong name again. Is it Anton? He's the eldest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, yeah, it's like you got Anton looking out for you. You got your mother looking out for you. You know, and they still think that Anton's a stand-up guy. You know, and it's a uh, it's a sort of situation where, you know, like clearly up until now she thought the the world of him, and you know she still wants to believe that. So, you know, like you said, these next two episodes will decide a lot. I think she may be the she may be uh, about to, you know, just basically she might turn Anton in, or she might you know, testify against him in court. Well, even when she stole money from the organization, it was like a last resort because she did try to get money like 14 different ways. I mean, she was talking to everyone. Uh, So I think she felt trapped. Like there was no other way out. And, and she's mentioned it several other times where, you know, the cops, she feels are targeting her kids. They're targeting their community community. So she didn't feel like her kid was, guilty so she's trying to do everything she can uh before breaking the law to help get them out and then she resorted to what she felt she needed to to be able to get her kid out of jail but now what kind of guilt is she feeling because it's to the point now where she knows that that child that died was more than likely at the hands of her kid Mm-hmm. So not even Shaban, who she likes, like that's a family friend. They, she really likes Shaban, but knowing that her daughter, her kids, uh, killed a, another child, I think that the guilt might eat away at her. And I don't know that. It, I think just by the type of character that they're trying to build her up to be, I think that she may flip on Anton. I, I think so, and it's it's the sort of thing, like you said. Um, well. You know, she's been a good person this whole time. And, you know, it was the sort of thing where, you know, I, I completely lost my point <laughs> for a second, <laughs> kind of blanked out. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's likely that she'll, she'll flip and, you know, cause she's given so much for this community and she believes in this community. And, you know, the way when Jackie came in there and was, was talking to her about, you know, the grant money that she's looking to secure and everything, you know, she looks at it like see now 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 I know where I was headed with this. She looks at it as uh, you know, 
she may be looking at it as they're trying to destroy our project in order to keep this community from doing better, you know, because, you know, she's involved in a lot of early activism and, you know, with her work now, she still kind of is. So, you know, and she, I'm sure she's had people sabotage her in the past and, you know, she just looks at it as they're trying to do this again. They're trying to hurt our project. You know, they don't want to see us succeed, you know, and it's, uh, and I, you know, and I, and I still think Anton's, shitty but you know i i don't think it's uh badly enough as i do now because they made it very clear by this point that they don't have as much money as a family as we originally thought they had you know that a lot of the resources she's using is it is you know gathered up you know just sort of in this trust to help with her project or her uh projects and to help with the community uh so you know it's it's not like anton wasn't doing this out of necessity to some degree or out of uh you know or wasn't wrapped into it just out of being in that neighborhood, living in the wrong neighborhood and, you know, being forced to be involved in these things. So, you know, while he is a bad guy now, you know, like the course he was even saying this episode, he may have been made into that by these conditions. Yeah. And I was just getting ready to argue against what you said until you said that last sentence, because his coldness and his lack of empathy for all the things that he's doing makes me feel like no matter what, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. How did he get to that point? And that to me is, you know, a, a more telling journey because I don't remember the gentleman's name who died. It was a uh, Calvin's friend who was going to college and everything. And he was trying to get out of that lifestyle. He's like, you know what? I got to get out. I have this scholarship. And even Calvin, who's, he's trying to go that same path. He's like, hey, you know, there's better things on the other side of this for me. And he's trying to do, better for himself but anton has already made peace with being a piece of shit but i don't know what caused him to get to that point either well yeah and it seems to be like you know it's like i don't think i know anyone who's that ruthless in any aspect of their life without you know having that kind of ruthlessness some kind of upon them you know (laughs) in, in some way well i mean there's a few there's a few sociopaths that I don't like that, but he doesn't, Anton doesn't seem like a, like an all out sociopath. There's people he legitimately cares about and everything. He seems to actually, to some degree, care about his mother and everything, you know, but, uh, it's, it's the sort of thing. It's like, it it could have been all he's seen in the world, you know, like this, this is the only way he's seen to, to ever actually, su- uh, succeed or survive. And, you know, so now he is who he is, you know, for better or worse. He is very cold, and he. It's interesting because he views. It see he seems to view view things as if this is just the way it is, and this is how you have to be. Yeah, and like yeah. That, because he he's very cold because you know he will say, well, you know, you say, well, innocent children will be killed, and he's just like, well, that's just fucking part of it. And the way he says it, you know, you could tell it really affects the people around him. Even his crew is like, you know, damn dude, um, but the way he went in at the end of the episode and just literally kills like five dudes and it's nothing to him mm-hmm. it, it in no way affects him yet his brother is sitting there can't do it he's he's shaking he's terrified and then he makes a dumbass move comes in the room and get you know gets shot <laughs> leaving himself completely open but well, anton is has become this cold calculating um drug runner kingpin whatever you want to call him and i i agree i would love to have gotten a little more on what made him that way yeah absolutely because it may be the only framework for success he's ever seen and i think the course he brings that up in the conversation he has with jackie you know where he talks about you know grace and everything that you know the way things could domino if they like if uh you know they like if they put her kids in jail and, you know, like, and try her for this or that, you know, and it's just like, you know, she does this and he's like, if this project is sabotaged, you know, like, like then this community never gets these resources. And he's like, and how many Antons do I create by doing this? You well, know, so. she grew up in that community. That's like her, that's the only place her kids have known because they mentioned that too. I think last episode when uh, Calvin and Anton were talking and they were talking about trying to get money to get, their mom out of the projects and Anton's like, nah, I ain't trying to leave (laughs) because that was their original goal. So whatever was that force driving 
Anton to do the things that he's doing. Uh, I don't know that he was ever a good person, but you know, people can be not great without having zero remorse about killing children. <laughs> I know a lot of assholes that would probably still be a little upset if they shot a kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, but it's the sort of thing it's like, uh, you know, Anton's motivations like may have been different back in the day because, you know, like his brother and him talk, like you mentioned, they were trying to get their mom out of the, out of the projects and everything. And, you know, it's the sort of thing where they may well have, uh, Anton may have had that conversation that his brother had with his mom, but a lot earlier where in which she herself said she's not going anywhere and that if she wanted to, she could have long ago. And we see that from Shaban's mom and the money that she has and everything. And, you know, like, in, I think she mentioned that in her conversation with Jackie, you know, that, you know, if she, like, if she wanted more, she could have had that. But what she wanted to do was to provide well, for this community. It, and going into that exact scene, you know, they make it clear that because Jackie's, you know, trying to figure out how to, you know, take Grace down. And he's told point blank, she has no skeletons in her closet. She's right. always been honest. She's always been fighting the good fight. She's clean, you know, anything she's done corrupt, she's done right now trying to protect, you know, her, her, her son. And, and so, yeah, no, Grace is a character that, uh, like I said, well, I will, we'll see in the next two episodes when, now that she has all the information, what does she do next? But no, Gra Grace is similar to a DeCourcy in that they're, they're a, they're good people that are trying to, to do the right thing and <laughs> a lot of bullshit's thrown their way. And I love the whole battle with De DeCourcy in this episode because, you know, the idea, well, he wants revenge and that's against what he typically does. And, and his wife basically saying it could destroy you or get you killed. You need to be ca more careful. And I like that whole angle, too. Yeah. Yeah. And she has a good point. But, you know, at the other side of that coin, if this isn't resolved, you know, oh, I'm not I'm not on her side in this argument. <laughs> in this argument. I'm just making the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Explaining. Yeah. No, DeCourcy needs to handle this. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah, I, because anton is you know the cold person one that we just mentioned so if he doesn't handle this you know it, we will come back to visit him do you guys i know this is way off topic but in the when she's doing the whole when she's uh, grace is being uh interviewed and she's basically given the alibi for anton she mentions you know he was playing mortal kombat yeah, and I'm like, did they? Is that line in there because they knew this episode would air when the Mortal Kombat movie came out? Like, I don't know. It just was one of those sort of things. I was like, is that why that's in there? I don't know. It's, well, I doubt it because I they, laughed. Or they pushed <laughs> they pushed the Mortal Kombat date back. That's and, true. Because this was supposed to come out like last year, but and they were also filming during COVID too. But regardless it was a very funny coincidence <laughs> funny coincidence very of the time yeah. also you know it's just uh oh i played the shit out of some mortal Kombat. oh yeah definitely i was you know? i was a bigger street fighter person though to be honest street fighter 2 turbo on super nintendo <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i just i don't know i wrote it in my notes i was just like i just thought it was funny um Anything else I, before we move on to some of the other characters? Anything else y'all want to say regarding the, the sort of the Grace, I guess, storyline? Well, it's like, I, uh, I think that it's going to, she's either going to be the savior or she's going to be the one that accidentally, not accidentally, probably on purpose, but gets Jackie in hot water because I think that she'll either help the case and it'll be easy to put them away. Or she's going to hinder the case so much that it's going to put Jackie in a poor light and perhaps hurt his uh, resurging career. We're talking about uh, Grace? Yeah. I'm, because if she put... Remember, Jackie's the one that's pushing this case right now. Mm -hmm. uh, old Campbell, Anton Campbell. So if Grace doesn't cooperate and they're not able to get... Uh, Anton on anything, then that's going to kill Jackie's career. Not that it's not already mm -hmm. dead in the water as it is, but it is resurging. He's and you know, he's angling. He, yeah, yeah, he's trying to use this case for something. You know, it, well, I'm not still not clear on what Jackie's angle is, but he, he's definitely trying to use this case. Well, well, yeah. I imagine by the end of the season, his his boss is going to ask him to, you know, keep up on his 
his promise. And he's like, nope. He's like, I'm once again your star agent. You're stuck with me. You know, he's just... <laughs> He's like, I solved this big case. It's all over the news. He's like, you want to get rid of me now? Yeah, I think he's using it for political power, you know, within his agency. So we have Kathy, who, you know, she's trying. She's in the drug game. Um, she tries to re up with the, with the Braxton crew. They, you know, the guy she was getting her stuff from was just like, go away pushes her down she gets hurt we get the whole scene with the medical bill which i, I felt that shit I've, I've been in a similar yeah, yep. situation where the medical bill you get it and you're just like fuck you man you know this is bullshit um so i i felt that pain and then we, we she ends up you know going to some old friends and finding her way to a new supply uh i she says like 50 times that frankie's d- dead Mm-hmm. I guess he's, is he dead? And then, but she hasn't told her kids cause her daughter, you know, was like, Hey, you know, when are we going to go see dad? And she's like, Oh, we're not going to go see him anymore. Um, I don't know why the show is not giving us that whole story. Maybe, maybe they're saving it for the big end. Maybe there's some kind of, <laughs> well, I, plot. I don't know. I thought it was super interesting because at first I thought she was just using that to manipulate the, the insurance lady at the hospital. And then, you know, she said it a couple more times and then she was telling Sheik and I don't remember the, his wife's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She but, says it to, the, to them. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he is, but I'm not sure how or what he got caught up in that took him out. Probably Jimmy. Cause he was a rat. So yeah. He yeah. probably got killed for being a rat, even though he wasn't the one that did anything, but. They couldn't get to Jimmy. So they got to him. Yep. But, um. What was her name again? The Ryan. Kathy. Kathy. There you go. I can't, I don't know what I was thinking, but that wasn't that. But she. Cassandra. Been on, <laughs> that was that. on board with her character for a while. Like I really despised her character. But this episode, I was so empathetic towards her. And I loved when she lashed out at everybody. It, this was an episode that I actually grew to like her a whole lot more. When she, you know, lost her shit on the insurance people, when she lost it on the people who she literally supported, she was giving them money Mm -hmm. while Sheik was in jail and she just, she was providing for them. And then she's like, Hey, you know, I just need a little bit to do this. And they're like, well, no, we're not going to do that. She's like, what the fuck do you mean? You're not going to do that. Were you as pissed as I was that they didn't show us the pot pie? (laughs) I was like, lift that. I want to know what it looks like. Y'all keep building up this pot pie. Right. This homemade Popeye, man. Like, they bring Popeye. You, I guess her like daughter's like, man, can I eat that, that shit that's on the stove? That looks good. What's that? <laughs> I'm like, show me the Popeye. Right. You're like, you, you, you've been hiding it for three scenes. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Yes. It's all foiled, all nice and everything. I want to see, well, I want to see what the dish looked like. Like, I don't know. You, like you're going to bring this pot pie up this much, you know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta show us, show it to us. You know, like it's in three different scenes. It seems to be. Like well, it, it's funny. in all of Kathy's scenes. It's funny because we talked about that in other shows. Like when we were watching Fargo and stuff, we made a big deal about how they're like picking apart these pieces of cake and how they're eating. And then this show, it's the exact opposite. They keep talking about it, but they don't ever show us. It, it would be like if in Twin Peaks, you never saw the apple pie that Coop eats and he just keeps talking about it. <laughs> He's like, man, there's this great apple pie at the diner. You know, you, you just like, well, never see. <laughs> Like but the, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the Kathy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I felt this whole episode, it wasn't a redemption arc because she's still trying to do shitty stuff, but her whole speech about, she doesn't care what she has to do to keep the shittiest roof over her kids' heads. And that to me was, that was a hard thing to hear because she is like she is doing they took her source of income away from her so now she can't even do that all these things that she had up she had a business she had all of this stuff and because of what jimmy did to frankie it fucked him over so bad that now she is resorting to by any means necessary to keep clothes on her kids back to keep food in the refrigerator to keep a roof over their head and you know, I wasn't a big fan of hers initially, but this episode was a lot of empathy, and it, man, it was rough. Before Larry, before you get going on this, do you 
there's only two left. The way her story's building, I don't feel it'll end this season. Matter of fact, I think it's just setting up whatever. I'm assuming they're hoping there's a third season. Do you think her story's set up to resolve in two episodes, or do you also feel that it may be just a setup for the next story? Because her story has almost felt like a, a, a like a, not a prequel, but like a prologue to to what the real Kathy story is going to be. I don't know. That's just how I've felt about it. Yeah, yeah, same here. It 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 definitely feels like a setup. Like us get, being at the point we're at where we have two episodes left. And and I think like you were insinuating before we started talking, you know, it, it very much sounds like it might tie into the story with uh with Jackie's uh Jackie's wife's friend there. You know, like uh it may be connected to whatever's going on with this whole IR IRA thing. It could, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, she straight said it. Maybe it's like, yeah, I was IRA, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess she defected. It sounds like um, she wasn't willing to, I guess, continue what you know, whatever it was she was doing. A guy attacks her in an alleyway, um, and and Jenny sees this and basically is like, hey, what's going on? She goes to Father Doyle to confide in him about this. And he gives her a great piece of advice she should have listened to. Uh, stay away. <laughs> Don't get involved in this shit. And she, of course, doesn't. She you know, goes to Maeve, and Maeve's just like, yeah, the, I was in that. I wanted, I guess she wanted out. She's trying to hide, but clearly people know and want her dead. And it. I don't know where this shit goes, but yeah, this could tie maybe into the the Kathy stuff. What the hell is Jackie going to do? Is is Jenny going to go to Jackie and be like, Hey, this is going on. What? I mean, Jackie may flip out and be like, Oh shit. I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. Right. Of all, like in, of all places for an Irish person to hide, why would you pick Boston? <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't you go to like Wyoming or something? <laughs> yeah. She should have moved to like Georgia or, you know, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I guess her thought was she knew, you know, she probably knew Doyle and knew she probably has connections there. But at the same time, yeah, you're you're also going to have enemies. It's like, yeah, that's the problem. You have connections here. You're trying yeah. to <laughs> escape those connections. Like, you know, if her story is true, at least, and if she's still not involved in anything, which she might be like in. But she also said something else interesting, which may come into play. Also, she's got a lot of training. Like she's she's got a lot of training in that group. Like she she's, you know, trained in firearms. She knows how to make bombs and stuff. Like is that going to play to any stories? Are we going to see her, you know, be a be a force to be reckoned with next season? I think those are the two storylines that'll probably carry. I think the Grace Campbell one will tie up this season. I think the carryover is going to be, uh, Shaban and her political aspirations. The IRA storyline and the uh, Kathy storyline. I think that's going to carry into next season. Mm. Just I agree. Based on how much time is left? Because you're you're right. The political story sort of got sidelined this season. It, it was starting and then it sort of got pushed to the side. But it feels like something that'll, I guess, it would resurface in a third season. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if we have enough episodes, two episodes, I don't you know, just the whole Maeve story just doesn't feel like it has enough time. Uh, the characters just, we're just learning who she is in the last, you know, two episodes. So, um, I haven't heard of a third season greenlit, but it, it, it more so than a lot of shows we watch, it feels like there's all, all set up for a third season. Well, with the Maeve story, I feel like if any, if we get anything out of this season, either, you know, we're going to get, like you said, a setup. And part of that setup may be finding out that she told the truth, but she wasn't telling the whole truth. You know, that there's and more to it. <laughs> I hope you got like, it'll be, uh, it'll be like, yeah, she, what is not that she was IRA. It's that she is IRA, you know, and she I may just... be, she may be wanted for something. Just make a reference to a few good men, which Kevin Bacon's in. So, hey. <laughs> I don't know. With the last like three things, Larry just said I was singing songs, but I didn't want us to get in trouble. So, <laughs> myself. 
<laughs> it's so funny. Every time I, <laughs> I don't think I've done this on air, but every time I watch City on a Hill, I, I have like a little song in my head. It's like City on a Hill. <laughs> like, like, I, like, I'm like, there needs to be a theme. It to feels this, like it's having like a it, '90s theme. It to does. It. Yeah. Like every time I see it, like I sing it in my in my head. But oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, speaking of singing. They've teased yet again. Uh, we were talking about you know all the teas with the pot pie uh, that Jenny was going to sing in the choir a solo, and I was assuming that it would be the last scene. Uh, it did. They didn't. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, is it, are they saving it for next week? Like, well, they they keep talking about this solo. Um, I don't know. It was one of those odd things that I was like, okay, I assumed that the ending scene would be her singing the solo, and it would have some significance to the episode but but they didn't it'll, think, it'll be our setup for uh for next season well one of them because her dad's going to be there or something Ooh. well and i maybe think maybe onto something i think too with her singing during a solo she's going to invite people and stuff but that may be when the actual ira shows up she may end up being a casualty you know being too close to mave or something like i think that we talk about main characters that may not make it out of this season. I think that Jenny's probably one of them. That's a possibility. And, you know, with that, you know, with Jackie having helped the Corsi with this whole issue with, with Siobhan, like he's going to demand, Jackie's going to demand help from, from the Corsi after this, you know? Yeah. That's what I was thinking because there's been so many parallels between their storylines there. And it's like, they slightly differ, but they're very close. And I think that this would be a, a way for them to get back to being parallel. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. I think there's pretty big possibility for that. There is a lawnmower in the background yet again. Apologies. Um, I just figured you were at an airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live. So it airport. sounds like. Oh. So like, but it, it may literally be Jenny singing her swan song towards the end of the season. You know, it's just, uh, like you said, uh, there may be like a like a hit at that church. I could see that. That's yeah. The, the all the build up, and you're like you're right. There would be she'd be inviting people, and yeah, I could see that going down several different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the decorsi, there wasn't a whole lot outside of you know him being really frustrated and everybody basically telling him to almost let it go, even his wife and. That was I was getting pissed at everyone from the chief to her to, I mean, how could he let something like this go? And, and yet everyone's outside of Jackie, Jackie being the only exception, who's like, yeah, let's go kill Anton. <laughs> oh, but this is the one area, and I think it was frustrating to Corsi where Jackie's the only one on his side, you know. Well, I love the district attorney, the main one, uh, the guy from the Wire. His all of his lines because in the wire, he was such a dickhead, but in this, he's still pretty he's roughly the same character, Yeah, <laughs> but his intentions aren't crooked. Like the, his character in the wire, because he even tells to course, he's like, look, dude, you're super smart. I'm trying to protect you from yourself. I'm trying to not fuck you over. It's like, you have to, you know, see that because, you know, the conflict of interest stuff, if, say he walks, say if Anton walked, it would look like, and they said this in the last episode or the one before, it would look like he was helping Shaban. Or say he does go down, and then they, the sentence is super harsh or whatever it is, it would look like they were conspiring, and it may get the case thrown out. So his worries are legitimate, but of course he doesn't want to hear any of that, and I can't blame him. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You see both sides on this one because, you know, it's like the Corsi getting personally involved. It's like, you know, no one in their right mind in that department would let that happen because it doesn't make sense. But, you know, if you're into Corsi shoes, you want to be as involved as possible. You want to make sure that, you know, Anton goes down for what he did. Like, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's got, it's gotten caught. Well, it was complicated from the beginning, but, you know, like you said, his boss is making sense with the things he's saying. You know, as, as shitty as a way as it is that he chose to say it, you know. Well, yeah, every, uh, between the most racist shit, like right? him, and then I love the scene at the bar because Jackie, 
you know, will say the most racist thing, but doesn't seem to get it. Like, he doesn't get that. It, yeah. <laughs> like, the course, he lo- that was a great scene because he looks at him. He's like, motherfucker, do you- <laughs> did you not hear what you just said, Jack? He's just eating peanuts and drinking. He's like, what? <laughs> it's like, how do you not know that's racist? And like, but, you know, it's like. But it's Jackie, so. It's Jack. Um, I'm through the notes. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about regarding uh, this episode? Uh, I just thought it was funny how bad uh, Anton wanted that sandwich. <laughs> he probably sit down there for like, <laughs> who knows how long. Right. Uh, wait on that shit. His brother was making a lot of sense. He's like, you know, where he's trying to tell him that it's fine and they're going to work it out. And he's like, no, nah, you're sitting in a basement with mayonnaise all over your face. He's like, things are not <laughs> fine. It's like, you live in a basement. The bigger, where was he shitting? Yeah, that's the... I don't know. It looked like a pretty long hallway. He probably just pooped on the other end of the hallway. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, for, for and, and that's another thing, too, for Anton to be where he is now and to go, no, everything's fine. You know, like we can make that work, make this work. It's like, good God. And you know, how hard did you have it on these streets, man? You know, it's just like living in a basement, not able to go outside, having someone bring you sandwiches every now and then, you know, is okay to you. You know, how, how, how bad are things? I'm just thought it would be funny if he looked at his brother and be like, they, did, they didn't have chips, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> usually when you buy a sandwich, you get a bag of chips. Shit. Where's my drink at? You drink my drink. For real. Like, he's, no, no, nothing to wash that down with. Not, not a side of chips. I'm just saying. <laughs> usually you get a combo wherever. Um, <laughs> I was thinking that when I, when I saw him eating, I was like, well, he didn't have a drink. Or, um, yeah, anything. Know. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't know how much a sub cost back then. They didn't have the whole $5 foot loan thing going on, so. True, but you go into any sandwich shop, like, not even not even the Subway, and usually you'll you'll get a uh, a, a bag of chips. Right. I've been, I've been several. Even, even like, um, non-chain places. Well, I, I do have one more thing to say about that. You know, it's just like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the one that was uh, supplying Kathy in Anton's gang. Uh like he made mention that you know, like their uh, that their uh, supplier, you know, their supply is dried dried up and everything. So it's like maybe they don't have a lot of money right now. They're being cornered by this other gang, and you know, it's uh, he and, couldn't uh, afford the chips. He <laughs> couldn't afford the chips. <laughs> the possibility. I just, I just looked it up to see when combo meals started, <laughs> and it was the fifties. So. <laughs> It was a big place in the 90s. They definitely had combo meals. Yeah, I'm sure they had combos. Like, but how much was that combo? <laughs> <laughs> and oh. even then, like, are, like, are they that bad off that they're dealing drugs? But then again, I guess they're not dealing drugs because they're they're out of their supply. And they can't <laughs> afford a combo. There is a lot of questions it's regarding the, the drug trade there. Because we, we still never really knew where he was getting their supply. Uh, Kathy's new connection. Is that a rival situation like you know what i mean like the the show really hasn't dug into that aspect of it as far as where the drugs are coming from which is why you know i kept bringing up or we all did you know the idea that maybe ira stuff would tie into that or right oh uh, and we but, yeah exactly we still don't know at this point so it's 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 got to be significant um but yeah anything else <laughs> no i think that's it for me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we covered the, the whole of the show so far. So, <laughs> I love that you just tried to change what you always say, Larry. You like caught yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you like made a conscious effort not to say it. I'm trying. I'm trying not to have a catchphrase. You know? Yeah, we we, we 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 talk about that off air. How we try we try not to, outside of my openings, which are always the same. Um, we try not to say the same things, but we fuck. We always end up doing that. Um, we're trying. We're trying to be better broadcasters. So, <laughs> uh, we yeah, we appreciate everyone listening. Uh, a lot of other content on the channel. Mayor of East Town's doing very well. We appreciate that. Uh, Big Sky still rocking and rolling. Um, so, <laughs> boy, oh boy, is it. Uh, so yeah, appreciate everyone listening. And yeah, we'll see y'all next time.
Bye. Bye.